Sure. Well, I just first say that you know, Mount St. Helens is one of the best monitored volcanoes in the world. And uh, because of that, we're able to see really, really small manifestations of an active volcanic system, including really small earthquakes. And most of the earthquakes that are happening now are magnitude one and less. Um, and right around February 1st or so, we started seeing an, uh, sort of an uptick in the rate of earthquake occurrence. And we've seen upticks like this um, before. Um, and it's part of the our understanding of an active volcanic system uh, that there's ebbs and flows with seismicity. And um, overall, it's something that is reflection that uh, Mount St. Helens um, geologically is a very active volcano. It's erupted very frequently, about once a century over the last several thousand years. And uh, so, you know, it's it's a reasonable interpretation that this is one sign that Mount St. Helens is um, getting ready to erupt, but that time frame is months, years, decades down the road. So uh, the last time it was in an extended quiet period was between uh, 1987 and 2004. So Mount St. Helens erupted 1980 to 1986, 87, 2004, nothing happening at the surface. But we were seeing similar ebbs and flows in seismicity rates during that time frame. Um, and uh, some of the sort of upticks or the, the increases in seismicity rates um, were longer and had bigger earthquakes than what we're seeing right now. Um, so that whole sequence, looking sort of retrospectively, uh, was uh, certainly reflecting uh, Mount St. Helens moving towards another eruption, uh, and that was almost 18 years uh, between, between eruptions. Um, we were watching those earthquakes at the time and uh, making inferences about what was happening at the magmatic system that I think proved to be correct um, in terms of uh, the the system sort of recharging and getting ready to go. And so, you know, here we are, um, 2004, 2008, it erupted. So 2008 to now is another one of these extended periods of quiescence at the surface, nothing coming out of the ground, but ebbs and flows in, uh, in, in earthquakes. And uh, by inference, if nothing else, um, it's it's reasonable to, to to hypothesize that a similar kind of thing is happening now that was happening in 1987-2004. Well, there have been 350 that have been located since February 1st, um, and so that's a rate of um, you know several to maybe 10 a day, um, and it it comes and goes a little bit. Um, but part of the answer to that question uh, is, this is going to sound like a typical scientist, but uh, <laughs> it, it depends on, uh, on, on things. So um, to be able to locate an earthquake, you have to be able to detect them on a certain number of stations. Um, but we can see really, really small earthquakes that only show up on two, three stations that are, that are difficult and slash impossible to locate. Um, but we still know that they're happening. So even though like the, 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 formal rate that you might see on, say, the University of Washington's Pacific Northwest Seismic Network page, which does the cataloging of earthquakes and locating of earthquakes, um, that shows a certain rate. Um, there's more earthquakes than are shown on that just because they're teeny tiny and they cannot be located. First and foremost is to understand where good sources of information uh, come from. So Pacific Northwest Seismic Network is uh, the authoritative source for information about earthquakes all over the place in Washington, Oregon. And so that's a great uh, group to pay, pay paying attention to. Um, USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory were the authoritative source for information about the status of volcanoes in Washington and Oregon as well. So that's Mount Rainier, Mount Baker, in addition to Mount St. Helens. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, also just kind of recognize that um, there a number of the volcanoes in Washington we consider to be active, which mm -hmm. reflects two things. One, not, none of them are erupting right now, but they have the potential to erupt in the future. And also um, almost all of them are showing some signs that they're active systems. So like Mount Baker, there's lots 
uh, there's there's active gas coming out of the crater. Mount Rainier, we see earthquakes beneath Mount Rainier, mm -hmm. kind of at, at, a, at a constant rate. Not quite the level of Mount St. Helens, but they're there. Um, Mount St. Helens, we see that the uh, earthquakes, obviously. Um, so it's um, uh, just you know, kind of live in Washington, knowing that if you spend your whole life here, it's likely that there will be one of these volcanoes that will erupt uh, at least once or twice. Uh, while you're here, and uh, when those happen, pay attention to the authorities and uh, and and make sure that you can be safe wherever you are. Our job is to detect the earliest signs of unrest and correctly interpret it, provide forecasts, and 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 then be in touch with. Uh, land managers and with emergency managers and other groups who have the responsibility of providing warning to people. Um, so um, we're in, in close contact and communication uh, with uh, groups like the Washington State Emergency Management Division, various counties that have uh, emergency response uh, uh, responsibilities, um, and, uh, and, and other groups. Um, so um, the, 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 the place to turn uh, is ultimately the local folks that you turn to for any kind of hazard, a wildfire, a flood, an earthquake. Uh, you'll get the same, uh, they're, they're the same sorts of information that you would hear information about for a volcanic eruption. So I, I think, you know, an all hazards approach is, is one I follow. Um, to be ready, you know, to have my go bag, get ready and go bag in case authorities come and say, hey, you have to go. Um, and, you know, with volcanoes, the things that are most likely to impact uh, people are, are ash, which is primarily a phenomenon for people who are downwind. Um, and, uh, and also these things that we call lahars or volcanic mud flows that uh, can come off of volcanoes, which are very high. Uh, and so there's a lot of momentum and the lahars pick up things as they go downstream, big boulders, big trees, and those can go uh, quite a long ways into low lying areas where, where people live. Um, so uh, those are scenarios where um, evacuations might be something that you would need to do. But if you're prepared to evacuate for a fire, for a flood, you'll be prepared to evacuate for, for an eruption. Um, the, the one thing that's maybe a little different is the ash side of things. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, there, uh, if you are in a situation where um, ash is around you, um, then obviously you want to be able to protect your lungs. And so, you know, things like the N95 masks that all of us have been well-versed in using uh, thanks to the, the, the pandemic, um, things like that are, are, are good to have around as well. It really depends on the volcano. Okay. Uh, so most most uh, of the hazards attached to an eruption are going to be close to that volcano. So uh, for Mount Rainier, uh, it, it would be areas around Mount Rainier. I, I'm down here in Vancouver, and I would likely not be impacted directly by uh, an eruption in Mount Rainier. But that being said, uh, if the um, eruption produces a lahar that goes down, say, the Puyallup River Valley, um, that could impact the I-5 corridor for, uh, for a while. Um, and so indirectly, a lot of people in Washington and Oregon could mm -hmm. be impacted by something like that. Uh, so I think, you know, the first thing is that right now, Mount St. Helens is not showing signs of an eruption. This is part of the natural ebb and flow of an active volcanic system. And we've seen Mount St. Helens erupt uh, twice now, wake up and erupt twice, first in 1980 and now in 2004. And uh, what we know is that she gives us warning uh, and, and much more significant signs of warning than what we're seeing right now. Um, just as, a, as, a, as an example, in 2004, when uh, uh, Mount St. Helens last erupted, um, we pretty quickly got to a point where we were with like quickly, like within a day or two, uh, we were getting an earthquake a minute. And uh, right now we're talking about 350 earthquakes over the last three months. Okay. So quite a significant difference in in uh, in, in earthquake rate um so so that that's i think you know a, a first important thing um a second important thing is um that um it's something like i said before that if um 
if those of us who are going to live in the Pacific Northwest for our uh, the entire of our lives um, are you know lucky enough to live a lo good, long, healthy life, we should expect there to be an eruption or two um, that will happen during our lifetimes. Um, those eruptions are often years long, and um, and for the most part, the hazards are really concentrated in the area right next to the volcano. And so, and and that's where places where things can happen fast, where explosions can happen without a lot of warning. Um, and so if people are telling you, if authorities are telling you to stay away, that's what they mean is that's the place where you, they, you really aren't gonna have a lot of a chance to escape if something happens. Um, but outside of that, there are these longer term processes and uh, like lahars and, and, and ash. And just to have a general awareness um, that if an eruption wakes, uh, if a volcano wakes up, those are the kinds of things that have a longer term impact and, and likelier uh, to impact um, a, a broader range of people. Um, so, you know, just um, it's part of living in this beautiful part of the country. Uh, it's a dynamic part that uh, has beautiful mountains, beautiful landscapes, and we have eruptions and we have earthquakes. So one, I guess you know, one first thing to say is that we don't have an ability to actually go down into the earth and see what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're doing is really inferring uh, the, the earthquakes are the symptom. If you want to take this into the doctor's realm, earthquakes are the symptom and the diagnosis is, oh, this is consistent with a volcano that's recharging. Um, there's other possible explanations. It's an important thing to, to say that. Um, there's 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 always some uncertainty when you're not actually to directly able to observe something. But we have some sense that it's consistent with what uh, what we're seeing now is consistent with what was happening in uh, before 2004. Obviously, there is an eruption there, so um, there's there's more I think confidence in that. And um, recharge can look like a couple different things. One is actual little new batch, batches of magma coming into the mid to upper crust and sort of making room for itself and breaking earthquakes. Um, another possibility is just that the whole system is sort of overall pressurizing. Um, and a way that that could happen is that there's leftover magma that didn't erupt in 2004 that is uh, still down there at shallow depths. It's sort of cooling. And as it cools, some gas comes out and that by itself can pressurize the system and uh, and and lead to these earthquakes. And ultimately, that pressure is big enough, it can help whatever's left behind there come out, which might have been what happened in 2004. That was maybe leftover magma from 1980 that didn't make it out, then stayed behind, sort of cooled, and some gas came out of that and was able to help uh, break a surface. And then some of that leftover magma came out. So the earthquakes are a symptom. Um, but they're they're not the cause. There's a, a much bigger forces at at, at work, um, and the the forces are ultimately what provides the energy for a lot of mass to start moving in the earth. That's one of the things I think that is um, so amazing about volcanic systems is that when there's a, just a lot of energy in them, and when you think about the 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 energy that's required to move as much magma as came out in 1980 or even 2004, it's, it's a lot. Um, so in terms of what gets the whole thing going, that's sort of the holy grail. Um, and if we were able to do that, then we'd be able to really nail when uh, when a volcano is going to erupt and when it's not going to erupt. Um, so uh, I, what we're able to do is use our really good monitoring network to um, take a really uh, careful attention, pay really careful attention, to um, everything that's happening at Mount St. Helens. And if you want to take it into the medical world, in essence, what we have is a blood pressure cuff on continuously on Mount mm -hmm. St. Helens, and we're taking its pulse continuously. Um, and so whenever there's any kind of deviations in that, that's when we really start paying attention and uh, start asking ourselves what could happen.